What's up guys, we're here in Marrakesh, Morocco, and in this video we're going to show you the best things to do in and around the city. We're also going to sprinkle in some travel tips to help keep you safe and have the best trip possible. So hope you enjoy the video. The bustling city of Marrakesh is located in the center of Morocco. With its vibrant colors, buzzing atmosphere, mix of tradition and modernity, and aromatic smells, it's a city like no other. Marrakesh truly stimulates all of your senses at once. In this video, we'll highlight the best things to do in and around this UNESCO World Heritage City. Now let's dive in. We are Zach and Ina. We make helpful videos about destinations around the world so you can easily plan your own adventures. The Medina is the old city of Marrakesh, entirely encircled by light pink walls. It's the heart of the city, packed with shops, traditional houses called riads, restaurants, and many of the historic sites. To learn all about the Medina and the local life in Marrakesh, we recommend going on a walking tour of the city on your first day here. It's a great way to become familiar with the labyrinth of alleyways as well as the local customs. The tour also takes you to corners that you likely wouldn't be able to find yourself, such as the workshops of the souks. Find a link to the tour that we did in the description below. One of the nice things about the city is that it's pretty compact. It's easy to get around places by walking, uh, but you should be careful crossing the streets because even if there's a crosswalk, it's not guaranteed that these cars are going to stop for you. So wait for your moment and you should be good. Morocco in general is known for its delicious, unique cuisine that you can't find anywhere else in the world. Some staples that you have to try include couscous, meat brochettes, and the most iconic dish of all, tagine, which usually includes some kind of meat, like chicken, beef, or lamb, that is left to simmer and slow cooked with herbs, spices, and other ingredients, such as dates, potatoes, and vegetables. Most restaurants are located near the main square of Jamal Fina, and you can find personal recommendations in our blog post. But don't shy away from the street food stalls as they offer a delicious and affordable selection of sandwiches and pastries, as well as freshly squeezed juice and more exotic dishes. You can't leave Marrakesh without visiting one of its historic sites. The Sadian tombs are a 16th century burial ground of the Sadian dynasty which ruled over Marrakesh between 1524 and 1668. The mausoleums are beautifully decorated and are set amidst a garden. The tombs were walled up by the following ruler to keep his predecessors out of sight and mind, and was only rediscovered in the early 20th century when aerial photography exposed it. If you think this historic spot has beautiful designs, wait until we show you the palaces in just a moment. Marrakesh is known for its beautiful gardens, and Majorelle Gardens might be the most famous one. Located in Marrakesh's new town, these lush botanical gardens are filled with cacti, palms, and other colorful trees, offering a true escape from the hustle and bustle of the city. It was originally created by artist Jacques Morel, who lived in this garden and villa complex. It was later purchased by the famous fashion designers Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger, who restored it. Today, it's open to the public, and some of the houses have been converted into museums. The Malache, or Jewish Quarter in Marrakesh, is another interesting area to visit. Located near the beautiful palaces that we'll discuss at numbers four and three, this quarter was once home to a sizable Jewish population. And while most of the Jewish residents have now left this area, there are still a number of Jewish places here, 
including the synagogue, the Jewish cemetery, and the spice market. This place will tickle your taste buds with a wide range of Moroccan spices, herbs, and herbal teas. Marrakesh is known for its traditional souks, which are basically markets or bazaars. In the past, a souk was an area where merchants passed through the city and traded goods. As such, you can find them in different corners inside and outside of the Medina. What makes the souks in Marrakesh remarkable is the wide variety of exotic items that you can buy, such as babouches, lanterns, ceramics, carpets, and leather goods. Most of the popular souks can be found next to the main square, and we put a graphic here on the screen with the names. We also left a link in the description where you can find directions to each souk. When you walk through the souks, you will notice that a lot of the vendors will talk to you, trying to get you into their shop. But if you don't want to buy anything, just say shokran, thank you, and just walk away. And if you do want to buy something, make sure to bargain because um, usually the price that they will offer is a little bit higher. So haggle down and make sure that what you pay in the end is comfortable for you. The Saudian ruler, Al Mansur, who was buried in the Saudian tombs we discussed earlier, also had built a grand palace in the 16th century. And although it stands largely in ruins today, it's easy to take a journey back in time and imagine the beauty it once had. Step foot inside and you'll see its grandeur, with mosaic tiled floors, ruined pavilions, and high enclosed ceilings. Make sure to go to the top of the walls, where you can take in the views of the palace from above, as well as across the Medina. After El Batie Palace, it might be interesting to see the contrast with the beautiful Bahia Palace, which was built in the late 19th century. The interior decoration combines colorful tiles, painted ceilings, and ornate wrought iron features that showcase a lavish lifestyle. The beautiful courtyards with banana leaf plants and trees are a tranquil break from the buzzing city. If you want a true escape from the noise of the city and would like to experience some of Morocco's finest nature, we recommend going on a day trip to the Usut waterfalls. With a height of 110 meters or 360 feet, these are the tallest waterfalls in the country. A day tour from Marrakesh allows you to spend around four hours at the falls, which is plenty of time to hike down to the river, take in the beauty, do a short boat ride to get closer to the falls, and then hike up again. There are many restaurants with a stunning viewpoint as well, on your way towards the exit. And as a bonus, you'll also encounter many macaque monkeys who call this place home. We really enjoyed this day tour, and we left a link to the one that we joined in the description below. If you have more time to spare than just the day, we also recommend venturing to the High Atlas region and the desert. You'll need at least a few days to really enjoy these unique landscapes, and we explain all about it in our full Morocco video. Finally, you can't leave Marrakesh without visiting its beating heart, the Jamal Fina Square. It's the hub of entertainment, with a variety of food and juice stalls, musicians, fortune tellers, henna tattoo artists, and snake charmers. The square really comes to life in the evening and can be a bit overwhelming for some people because of its loud noise and large crowds. An evening spent here wandering around is a truly Moroccan experience. To escape the chaos, you can head to one of the rooftop cafes next to the square that offer panoramic views.
Don't forget to check out the Kutubiya Mosque, which can be found right next to the square. It's Marrakesh's most famous landmark, with its large minaret that is visible from every direction. There are a few things to do in Marrakesh that we didn't mention, and we've included a list of those on the screen here for you. If you're planning your Morocco trip, we recommend keeping things organized with our interactive travel planner. Find a discount code below. We also included important links that you'll need for your Marrakesh trip in the description, such as a full travel guide with where to stay and where to eat, as well as directions to get to each spot that we mentioned. We'll catch you on the next adventure.